Hello everybody, welcome to the Fairy Whispering Podcast. I'm your host, Claire Sylvan Wand. Before I introduce the episode and my guest, a short update on the podcast. I've had a bigger gap than intended between the previous episode and this one. The reason for that is in my other life, away from the podcast, I am a carer for my daughter and I also have been supporting my mum who is very unwell right now. As always, nature and the whispers of the Fae have been a great support for me whilst I process my feelings of grief around my mum's illness. I am also completing my first book about fairies and for any writers out there you'll understand that writing needs a lot of time and space. My intention for the time being is to continue to release episodes monthly. That way, I have time to complete episodes to a high standard for my listeners. Thanks for understanding. I have some great episodes coming up and I'm thrilled to say that the podcast is gaining new listeners. Please share with friends if you enjoy this one. I have uploaded most of the episodes onto my Fairy Whisperer YouTube channel also. Now, on to the episode. In this heartwarming episode of the Fairy Whispering Podcast, join me, Claire Sylvan Wand, as I delve into the enchanting world of sound healer, Reiki practitioner and singer-songwriter Francesca Lazarski, affectionately known as Fran. Our connection blossomed through shared online fairy communities and today Fran opens up about her profound bond with nature, trees and the fae. From her childhood yearnings to remain in the forest's embrace to her intimate conversations with an apple tree, Fran's journey is a testament to the deep-rooted connections humans can forge with the natural world. She recounts her first auditory encounter with fairy music, a comforting flute melody that assured her of the unseen support surrounding her. As we explore Fran's life, she reveals the transformative guidance she received from a yew tree, shifting her perception and teaching her to stand in her power. Fran's experiences with trees are not just interactions, but exchanges of wisdom and healing, highlighting the living spirits that reside within them. Fran also shares a touching account of a crab apple tree fairy, a wise old lady in traditional attire who appeared to offer answers and reassurance. This episode is a reminder of the magic that lies in listening to nature's whispers and the healing that can come from truly seeing the life in all things. Join us as we wander through memories, discuss the power of tree medicine and ponder the mysterious specks of light that visit us in the quiet of the night. If you've ever felt a kinship with the forest or sensed the playful presence of the Fae, this conversation will feel like coming home. Please consider supporting the podcast with a donation on my Fairy Whisper Buy Me A Coffee page or on the podcast Buzzsprout page. And follow us on social media for more fairy encounters and nature musings. A note here, listener discretion is advised as the content may not be suitable for young children. This podcast is recommended for those aged 16 and above. You're listening to the Fairy Whispering Podcast. This episode is called Songstress of the Sylvan Realm. Enjoy and I will come back to you at the end. The Fairy Whispering Podcast explores guests' encounters with the other world of fairy and ways of connecting with this realm. From listening to messages in owl's hoots, finding a four-leaf clover, chasing rainbows or inviting a gnome to dinner. I'm Claire Sylvan Wand, a fairy whisperer, researcher and your guide on this journey. Take my hand and step into the twilight woodland where they are waiting to meet you. Fran has come on 
on today because we've kind of connected online, haven't we, through um, online fairy connections. And you connect with trees and fairies, something I love. I love trees and obviously this is all about fairies and working with fairies. So welcome, Fran. Thank you yeah. for having me. And it's really lovely to finally chat to you. It's been a while, hasn't it, to sort of marry up our diaries. Yes. <laughs> it's been really nice to yeah, it's really nice yeah. to see. You. I think <clears throat> it always works out though, doesn't it? I think it's always right timing. It does. Yeah. It does. Definitely. When we're yeah. in the yeah, the space arrives. So I was just wondering what you'd like mm. to share about your work how you connect with trees and your experiences with the fae so maybe would you like to start with your childhood or yeah you, that's you were talking... probably the best yeah. place to start mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's great I've, I've had mm. um yeah I was making a list actually before I connected with you just now and I suddenly realized actually this these kind of sensitivities to nature and to spirit and to fairies has been ever since I was a child, which I know is the case with a lot of people. I think my first, I guess, experience of fairy, I mean, when I was a child, I was always out, out in the garden, out in nature. I love being outside. We'd go quite often with family to the New Forest, which is nearby to where I live. Mm-hmm. And I always remember having this real kind of deep sense that whenever I went to the forest I felt so at home I felt absolutely at home ever since I was a small child and just loved the energy of the trees and the smells and the sounds and, and I would always always remember coming back so having to leave the forest to come back to Southampton where I lived at the time always being in the back of the car with my kind of arms on the the back windowsill staring longingly out of the window and crying and actually saying I don't want to go home I want to stay in the forest you know it was a really really strong feeling Mm -hmm. I still feel like that now although I don't cry (laughs) I don't cry anymore (laughs) when I leave the forest but yeah as a child it was really it was like something was being ripped away from me Mm -hmm. when I left the forest if that Mm -hmm. makes sense Mm -hmm. I just felt more at home in the forest with the trees so never nobody ever really questioned it but I remember sort of at home in the garden we had a a, in one of our houses where we lived we had a beautiful apple tree so I would always go and sit in the apple tree and so I must have been thinking around the age of seven and eight and any time I had a problem or any time I needed some guidance I would sit in this apple tree and tell it everything Mm. and I would get impressions coming back and answers and I'd hear the tree talking and it always made me feel more uplifted and I felt supported and I felt I always had someone I could talk to I came I come from a big family and it was always quite kind of busy and boisterous in the house so I think for me being sensitive having that space to go outside and to be with a tree was just, you know, essential for my kind of well-being. And this kind of continued all through my childhood. Um, There was probably a a period in my teens where I I didn't feel so connected, but then I did reconnect again. That was largely down to kind of religious upbringing as well. That's something I'll maybe talk about a bit later. Um, But yeah, the connection with the tree and nature was so profound and really important to me. Um, and this particular apple tree, um, you know, I always had a sense that it was alive and listening and was very feminine, very feminine spirit. I remember also going to bed one evening. I think I'd been in the garden all day. It was in the summer. I'd gone into bed, <clears throat> excuse me. And it was like in a half light, there was like the moon coming through the curtains. And I didn't see anything, but I heard like a beautiful flute, like really high sort of mm-hmm. playful flutes music. 
And I remember looking out the window and thinking, who's that? It was really quite late. And I was thinking, who's out there? Who's playing? Mm. There was nobody in my garden, nobody in the next door's garden. And I remember having a sense then of that feels like fairies. But I hadn't actually mm. seen them, but I felt I'd heard them. Um, mm-hmm. And I think my sense of sound, of hearing and I've always been very sensitive to sound. So whether that was my first yes. experience of them, yeah. it felt really joyful and beautiful and playful and mm-hmm. and comforting. Um, so I just remember then <clears throat> going back and, you know, back under the cover and, and I think I fell asleep. But yeah, this connection with trees, I honestly can say I thought that everybody had it. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't until I was the age of 30. Um, I was in a, a spiritual development circle mm. and we were just exchanging experiences. And I said about, I said to them, well, you know, when we all talk to trees and hear the trees talking back and they kind of looked at me like, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought, surely everybody has this experience. Mm-hmm. So I think kind of all through my younger years, I hadn't ever questioned it because I literally thought, well, everybody can hear trees or talks mm-hmm. to trees and I didn't think there was anything odd about it. No, um, it's, I think it is part of our natural way yeah. of being and, that yeah. so many of us have forgotten. So, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And I think this is it. I think because I know there are a lot of people that have had that ex- you know, experience since childhood. And yes, whether, you know, at, one, at what point, you know, are we, I don't know, we're kind of disconnected from that. And I don't know why and how that happens for various reasons, I guess, but. It was just a real revelation for me that when this group of people were just staring at me going, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, yeah. and this was a spiritual development group. I mean, this yeah. is going back sort of over 20 years. But yeah, I was just having, within meditations, I was having a lot of um, kind of images of trees and mm. tree spirits coming to me. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think... It's something that's always been with me. And I think for a long time, as with many of us, we don't talk about it that much with our kind of mm. nearest and dearest <laughs> or kind no. of um, colleagues. Did you uh, oh. sing to the trees? Because you were saying you were a singer-songwriter. Did you um, sing to them? Yeah. yeah. I have done over the years, yeah. So, um, again, I think it was probably kind of my late teens that I started to really reconnect again. Um mm. And yeah, I would go and sing, and I do. I do that now. I I always sing to the trees now. And mm. whenever I visit a tree, and I ask for permission, you know, to approach them, and is it okay for me to spend some time with you? And you know, most of the time, it's absolutely yes. You know, they love, they do love human company. Yes, I think if you go with a good heart and yeah. an open mind, you know, you really can connect quite deeply. Mm. So I'll always leave a song. So if I, um, you know, if I've been spending time with the tree and had some advice or some healing, instead of leaving a, a kind of a physical offering, I'll, I'll offer a, a gift of song. And it's just always a nice way to kind of say thank you. Mm. Very simple as well. It's a very simple way. And because it's coming from you, from your heart, from your soul, I think the trees really appreciate it. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's something definitely I, I do. I do do a lot. And um, when you feel into your heart space of that, that experience of hearing that flute music, is there a message, a subliminal message or that you feel was there for you? Now a quick break with some news from me. Hello dear listeners, the Fairy Whispering Podcast is an independent show entirely produced by me. To keep the show rolling, please show your support by becoming a monthly subscriber on the podcast Buzzsprout website or on my Fairy Whisperer Buy Me A Coffee page and by following, sharing with a friend and leaving a five star review. Also, If you or someone you know has had a fairy encounter or other unexplained encounter, I'd love to hear from you. You can send me your story to claire at fairywhisperer.co.uk. All of these links are in the show description. Thank you. Now back to the episode. I 
think it just made me feel comforted. I think mm. there were there were issues, you know, like a lot of us have in childhood with, you know, I think I always felt very out of place. And mm. even though I'm one of a twin, I have a twin sister. Oh, gee. But I seem oh. to be the more quieter one. Mm-hmm. The more more of a loner, and to feel that I had someone something that I could kind of resonate with, and yeah, the, the flute music I think just I don't know there was some there was some kind of reassurance. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly at that time what was happening in my life, but mm-hmm. it was kind of a reassuring, like it's all going to be okay kind of um, sense to the music. Yes. Um, As you're saying that, I'm getting this feeling in my solar plexus that, you know, it's this feeling of um, this indescribable kind of like these moments open up another portal in our lives Mm. that move us forward. Mm. It's almost Mm. like being in a timeless, that's the sense I'm getting, it's this timeless, timeless space. That we go into, don't we? Mm. It's almost like then we moved onwards and mm. forwards, and it's this, yeah, really warm feeling. I'm yeah. receiving Definitely. from when sharing. Oh, <laughs> when sharing. it's beautiful. Thank you. It's so yeah. special. Thank you oh. for sharing that. Yeah, that's okay. Mm. Yeah, and so, I think I think with fairies and, and nature spirits, um, and I have I have had encounters with there were three particular encounters which I know you you know I've shared with um, Joe Hickey Hall on her podcast, yeah, which was yeah. later in my life when I was a bit older, but I think yeah those those kind of formative years, those mm-hmm. connections to, to fairy and nature spirits and trees, was just full of joy and innocence and just yeah. lovely you know I never felt alone I think and I still feel that now if I'm feeling a bit kind of out of sorts or a bit alone about with anything mm. I go straight to one of my favorite trees and mm. I feel completely you know these are my team <laughs> you know this is yes. my support team you know yeah mm. it's hard to describe it really and I, I used to joke with friends I've got more photos of trees and I have family <laughs> you know family photos it's like I'm always taking pictures of trees and leaves and I was in the forest on Sunday with my partner and I am like a child in a sweet shop it's just mm-hmm. <laughs> yes things call to me you know mm-hmm. and um and I know you know I have to kind of sometimes you kind of calm it down you think okay you need to spend just quiet time which I did and I and I do but it's that sensory thing. I kind of feel everything's kind of, you know, mm. sparking in my senses. And mm. it's a lovely feeling. It's play, again, it's that kind of playful feeling. And I, and I feel that is often the fairies, the nature spirits, you know, they're very playful and, you know, cheeky sometimes. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you, you feel that. Yeah. Mm. Do you I, remember? I remember. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Carry on. No, carry on. Sorry, no, no, no. That's okay. Just, I had a thought just also. So I think, yeah, having heard what I think was fairy music when I was younger, to then start seeing, and I, I sensed him, but to start seeing fairy, the first time I really remember seeing sort of the fairy orbs and lights. Was mm-hmm. at Chalice World Gardens in Glastonbury. Well, I'd nice. gone, I'd gone up one weekend. I think it was in no, it was in November. It was like a really kind of mm-hmm. grey kind of weekend. Mm-hmm. I'd just gone on my own. I stayed in a little lovely little B and B. Um, I'd gone to Chalice World Gardens for the first time. Mm-hmm. Didn't know what 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 it was and what to expect. But again, just walking around the gardens quietly, I could sort of sense movement in the trees Um, Mm -hmm. and I started seeing little blue kind of flashes of light and orbs they were blue and then white Um, and I remember thinking oh that's interesting you know what's that and it was it was kind of five o'clock in the winter so it was getting dark so they were quite bright Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then as I walked back through sort of to leave, walk through the little shop, just as I walked into the shop on the on the shelf in front of me was um, a book by William Bloom, How to Connect with Nature Spirits and Fairies. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because I thought, oh, that's a sign. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, a really good book. And and I just thought, yeah, that's a sign. That's definitely a sign. And I think that's kind of really where it started then after then, you know, really kind of feeling more connected and yeah, and seeing seeing the fairy. What what do you think? I know, you know, orbs all orbs can be different colours and um, I'm just wondering because I've spoken to somebody else yesterday who saw blue orb in the woods Mm -hmm. and i've seen blue flashes next to people and sometimes i see like a little blue i think it's like a spirit guide because i see this little blue flash every now and again but i'm just wondering what your thoughts on the significance of the color blue for these orbs what do you think that's Right. Any ideas? Yeah, I think, I mean, blue, it's it's very healing, I think, for me. Um, Mm. I feel uh, what you've just described, the little flash of the blue, I I sometimes Mm. see that around me as well. And I I feel it is spirit um, giving me some sort of healing. Mm. Um, yeah, what we've brought us your experience of the blue, do you feel? Do you know, I've I've not really thought too much about it apart from mm. the um the blue symbolizing healing, blue light symbolizing mm. healing, mm. or you can use it as a protection, can't you? There's protection. different kinds of yeah. lights that you can use, and I know that's a light mm. that is used you know, if you want to protect yourself when working mm. with fairies. But yes, I, I'm i just interested, really, if, if anyone's got any other ideas about yeah. what these <laughs> colours... I think you're right, actually, with the protection. Yeah, I haven't I hadn't really thought about that because I do use mm. a blue light as protection at night actually mm. not all the time if I just sense I've, I've lived in a, quite a number of houses that have been haunted <laughs> yeah. um, and some have been okay and some haven't been very very nice at all so I have used mm. the blue light because I I was at one point it was after the I don't know if you've heard listened to the podcast with Joe but the, the goblin experience that I had oh yes um, yeah Mm-hmm. The goblin that was in my bedroom, um, mm. which was really frightening. Yeah. And I yes. remember talking to, at the time I was working in a crystal shop, and I remember talking mm. to my boss, and he said, mm-hmm. oh, surround yourself with white light, mm. which I did. And I was doing this white light every night, and it, I was just getting more stuff coming in and more activity. And, and then somebody else came in and said, actually, it's a blue light you need, not white, because mm-hmm. the white will attract energy mm, okay so yeah, yeah. Mm. blue light would make sense it's a protection as well as a healing yeah, yes definitely. yeah mm. and that's just what i've learned mm. from reading fairy books about working with fairies okay. mm. yeah. yeah so yes but i'm interested in when you're connecting with trees Mm. how they sound to you because I've had my own experiences of hearing tree voices yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and you know be interested in hearing what your experience of how they how their voices sound I'm sure people listening would be mm. Mm. so they're often very they just sound very that kind of very wise ancient sounding voice it's never never sounds particularly youthful they always sound quite in my experience Mm. that kind of mature wise guiding kind of voice I did have an experience one time we were were leaving our last family home we had we had to move out it's a 
beautiful big Edwardian house and in the garden mm. there was this gorgeous sycamore tree and it was mm. right outside my bedroom I had like a little kind of balcony that I could sit out on and be quite close to the tree quite high up yes. and I would go out at night and sit with it and talk to it um, and this tree became really important to me when I came to leave the house I was really quite sad to leave it and I thought I want to give it a gift so I had this lovely little quartz crystal point with a rainbow in it mm. and when nobody was looking I went down to the garden and I stood in front of the tree and I said I want to give you this gift and I got my little trowel and I was digging at the base of the tree to try and bury the crystal. Yeah. And it was all kind of earth, quite solid earth and a few stones. And I couldn't get through the stones. Mm. So as I'm digging with this trowel, I suddenly heard a voice. And it was mm. this very deep, wise male voice say mm. to me, stop digging and push through the ivy. Oh. And it really took me aback. I, was like, yes. I thought, this is the tree talking to me and mm -hmm. so I had the crystal in my hand and I thought what does he mean push through the ivy but all at the base mm -hmm. you know real mass of ivy all around the base of the tree so I just trusted I took the crystal in my hand put my hand through the ivy and as I put my hand through the ivy it went down and down and down and down and there was a mm -hmm. hole right under the tree but it was hidden in the ivy I literally okay. got more or less my hole under the tree and I placed oh. the crystal there. And I had no idea that that was there. I had no idea, mm. you know, I, I wouldn't have thought to look through the ivy. But, yeah, the voice of the tree was just this really warm, kind of wise, mm. kind of parental voice. And interestingly, I called him Father Tree. I would call oh. him Father Tree. So that's exactly how he sounded. Yeah, and it was lovely, and so that, yeah, it was such a vivid memory. Yeah, that sounds like a fairy door that you mm. found. Yeah, yeah. Mm. definitely, definitely. And I seem to find, yeah, quite a few actually when I'm out nowadays as well in the forest. As oh yeah, they kind of call to you as well. It's it's kind mm. of strange. It's um, it's exciting, yeah. isn't it? I get really it's excited. Really exciting, yeah. When I find them, I know <laughs> it's exciting. I know some people might think, why is she getting so excited? But I see them. <laughs> okay. Like, and you know, it's like a little some of them, they look like actual little doors, you know, the ones that are just yeah. haven't got an yeah. opening yeah. with a handle on sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. and my children. <laughs> And like mom, oh. you know, when I was, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, it's very dull. I love that. I love, no, I'm like that as well. Oh, I'm glad you're, I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah, I think it is exciting. And I always yeah. say, I always say, whoever I'm with, I'll say, oh, it's a fairy door, you know. But yeah, yeah. this doorway under the sycamore, I mean, mm. I, I'm like, I kind of felt that that was the tree speaking to me. I didn't feel it was a fairy at that point, but. Could have been a very old wise fairy telling me, I don't know, but yeah, it felt it felt like the tree was speaking. Mm. But but it was exciting actually. I just I was just amazed. I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> I just followed yeah. the guidance. I just followed what I was told to do, you know, and trusted. Yes. And even though my rational brain was saying, No, oh, that's not gonna work, you know. Mm. But it was literally and there was no need to even, you know, feel unsafe or anything. It just it pushed my arm in, dropped the crystal under the tree, pulled my arm out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did was... you? Sorry, I was just wondering yeah, if you right, received no, anything in response to your offering, whether there was something that came up in your life, or whether that that was the gift and the kind of your goodbye mm, to the tree and. Yeah. I've and just moved on or I think that was just my goodbye yeah, yeah. I think that was just my goodbye because <clears throat> I felt this tree had been well it became more important to me after because my father died um, when we were in that house oh. and it was probably I think we moved mm. about four or five years after he died oh. so I think the, the the kind of the importance of that tree grew as it were after he died mm. um but yeah, again, it was just, I just wanted to say thank you because this tree had given me support and they'd listened to me and 
Mm. You know, I think especially when you're grieving, um, trees are just amazing healers. They're just, you know, you can just pour out whatever it is you're feeling. Mm. And not not always necessarily, you may not always necessarily hear something back, or but there's a feeling, there's a knowing, there's a sense of something's been processed and this tree has listened and and yeah I think that was my kind of feeling was I just wanted to thank thank the tree before saying goodbye mm. you know oh that's beautiful yeah. it's yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's such yeah. a vivid memory you know mm. I can still really see and feel and hear that tree now and that was mm. almost nearly 24 years ago you know yeah wow and do you still feel a connection with your the apple trees that you connected yeah. with as a childhood as a child or yeah. still, I still love apple trees. I still feel and again I get quite excited when I, <laughs> I see one or Yeah <laughs> and the crab apples as well. There were loads of crab apples in the forest when I was out, out there on Sunday. Oh, wow. There's just something about them. But obviously I had my crab apple tree fairy as well um encounter that was oh um when did i have that that was 20 years ago um, oh i'd love to hear about that yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah that was another period of my life which was a bit of tra- 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 turmoil trauma um i think this is it it's, my life's been quite interesting in lots of ways <laughs> i won't go into it all now but but yeah Throughout all of it has been definitely the trees have helped me, have mm. healed me, saved me, really, mm. definitely. Um, so, yeah, this one particular time I was going through a bit of a bad patch. And I'd gone out into the forest one afternoon and I knew a particular walk um, that I'd been to before. And there was like a little stream and a little kind of quite a, a private little space with trees. Mm. So I kind of found my way to this this place and I sat underneath it was an ash tree I put oh. my back against the ash tree and and I and there's a street and water as well is very healing for me so I connect very mm-hmm. much to the water spirits and what with that and the trees <laughs> and so of course I just sat with my back to the tree and I just started talking about all the things that were going on in my life and needing some answers and I was crying and just really purging my emotions and just mm. everything was coming out. And I was, I felt safe. I felt, you know, nobody could see me. Mm. Um, I take, I always take my shoes off, shoes and socks off and have my feet on the earth as well when I'm mm-hmm. connecting the trees. And, um, so anyway, after literally a couple of hours, I think of just talking to the ash tree and I stood up and I, I thanked the ash tree and said, well, thank you for listening. And, you know, for helping me sort of find my way through. Mm-hmm. And then as I turned to leave on the ground in front of me, there was a little branch with some crab apples, sort of three crab oh. apples on. Yeah. Literally right by my feet as I turned around. But I looked mm-hmm. and I thought, there's no crab apple trees around here. And I hadn't seen any when I sat down. And they weren't there when I sat down either. <laughs> so oh, um interesting, yeah. <laughs> I picked it up and um, it mm. felt like, again, a gift. So I, I thought, okay, I, I'll accept it. Thank you. And I popped mm. it in my bag. And as I was about to walk off ahead, I saw about, I don't know how many, four or five metres, I think, there was a little crab apple tree. Oh. Which I hadn't seen. It's a really old, wizened little crab apple tree. Oh. And oh. I thought, oh, that's where it's come from. Yes. I thanked the tree, and then I thought there was something in me. I thought, I think that the apple tree's been listening as well, you know, not just the ash. Mm-hmm. So I got home, I had quite a you know relaxed evening, had some dinner, went to bed, feeling quite good. And before that, I popped the little branches of crab apples on my dresser in my bedroom. Mm-hmm. I had some crystals there, and I thought, well, it kind of... I always keep things like that. I always keep them close. Um, Mm -hmm. So I went to bed and then I don't know what time, early hours of the morning, I I woke up and I could see on my dresser this little tiny green kind of pea-sized 
light, bright oh, fluorescent green. Yes. Sorry, and I, 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 I lay there thinking, oh, that's that's where my crab apples, that's where the crab apples are on the dresser. Mm. So in pitch black, and I'm just watching this tiny green light, and my rational brain was saying, "Oh, it's my mobile phone." I've let it's like, you know, I used to have an old mobile phone with a green mm-hmm. flashing light, and I thought, "Oh, it must be my phone." I've left it on, and it's on the dresser. And then I thought, "No, I definitely put that in my bag in the other room. Mm-hmm. I will switch it off." At night. So as I'm laying there and I see this little green light suddenly lift off the dresser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and it very slowly floated towards the bed yeah. and I watched it and I didn't feel scared or anything like that I just saw this beautiful fluorescent green light mm. and it came and it's it stopped at the level of my head mm-hmm. beside the bed and I watched it and as I, as I was looking at it it then formed into a little old lady a little old oh. very wizened oh. beautiful old lady with really kind of wrinkled wizened face but really beautiful, bright, bright eyes. Mm. She was about three foot tall. Oh. And she was wearing what reminded me of the Welsh national costume. Okay. So she yep. had this long sort of skirt and a white blouse and a shawl over her shoulders. And mm. she had the little black, you know, like the Welsh um, costume, the little black yeah. hat. Yeah. And she stood there and she telepathically gave me answers to some of the questions I'd had in the forest. And wow. that was then I realised that it was the apple, oh. it was the crab apple tree that was that had been listening. Oh, that's so, so amazing. She'd come back oh. she'd come back with me. <laughs> she'd come back with me in the oh. in those apples that I was given because they were not there when I first sat down. Mm. Um, but it was it was interesting because all of this happening it mm. felt completely normal. It felt completely normal and natural. Mm. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I don't think I told anyone to begin with because I kind of wanted to keep it special for me. Mm. Um, but over the years, I then told a couple of friends about it. And obviously, I've, I've spoken to Joe about it. But again, I you a know, clear picture in my mind of how she looked. Mm. And her voice was def- definitely an old lady's voice, very wise old, old mm. lady. Was she, I mean, was she human looking or was there anything that was slightly yeah. not human about her? No, she was very uh, human, very human mm. looking um, and about three foot tall. I'd say, well, she was up to sort of bed, you know, my head yeah. height when I was lying on the bed. Oh. So I was lying oh. on my left side. Mm. So she was at the same level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the the only other thing that happened, interesting thing that happened after that, I remember, I think it must have been probably a few days after that, I'd gone to catch a bus from just mm-hmm. near to where I live. And I remember being stood at the bus stop and it was up near, there's a place in Southampton called The Common, which is all common land, so it's a lot of woodland, mm. which is where I lived nearby at the time. I'm stood waiting for the bus and there was nobody around me. And then it, suddenly... I sensed an old lady behind me (laughs) and she looked similar. She looked very similar to the fairy that I'd seen. Really? But this, but she was more human and she was more solid and she was, she was taller than three foot. She was a little bit about five Mm. foot, I'd say, Mm. but she had a similar face and she was just really lovely. And she had this lovely energy and I don't remember her clothes that well, but I know they weren't modern. Mm-hmm. There was a kind of a traditional kind of dress to her, but I can't quite remember what she was wearing. Mm-hmm. But she was just talking to me about sort of passing the time of day and just saying, oh, yes, it's, it wasn't a lovely day, even though it was quite cloudy. And yeah. again, this really lovely kind of, there was a sense to her that she was just very um, uplifted and, and really mm-hmm. sweet and kind and and I remember it was it was maybe I don't know how long this was, but I chatted to her, and then I turned to look because the bus was coming, and then she'd gone. I looked back and she'd gone. Oh, I got chills! It was literally that quick. And oh I thought, my gosh! 
Yeah. Wow, I didn't know what to think. I was thinking, you know, mm. was this the fairy come back in human form or mm. was this somebody else coming? Um, yeah. Mm. And I think back then I didn't really explore or research all of this. I just kind of took it as, oh, well, that's something else because I had so many strange things happening in my life. I just took it as normal. I, I yeah. really did. I just, and I always have done. And, mm. And I think this is why it's tricky when you talk to some people because there are certain, you know, some people obviously that are open and, mm. and have had similar experiences that understand it. But mm-hmm. talking to people that don't understand or haven't had those experiences, yes. you know, you can see them thinking, she's going mad. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, it's... But I know this happened. I know, I know yeah. those things happened. And... Yeah, and it, it does sound like, I mean, she sounds... And it feels like, normal, you... doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and as you're talking, it sounds to me and feels to me like almost like fairy godmother kind of energy. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Like yeah. yeah. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. No, that's I, true. That's exactly how it felt. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I just want to share something because I went to, I went to Castle Drogo yesterday with my daughter and my who's 17 and she's very much into paranormal like she loves Japanese folklore and stories so she's kind of interested in what I do as well and I told her this experience I had when I was in my 20s where similar to what you're just saying where I, I went to Castle Drogo to look around and there's a, a portrait of a family member. I won't say which one, but there's a young man and there's a portrait of him. Mm-hmm. And they've got, he was killed in the First World War, the son of the family. And they've got a room dedicated to him. You know, the family laid out a room to remember him, like a memorial bedroom kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I remember, this is my memory, I remember standing outside this bedroom and there were some other tourists behind me looking around. It's like a National Trust place. They were all like a group of people behind me and I was at the front of this group, if you see what I mean, looking into yeah. this room. And as I looked behind me, there was a man at the back of the group that just looked just like this young man that was in this oh, portrait. What? looking at me I get chills singing the same sort of expression as in the portrait that's just stayed with me and I I, Mm. and my daughter remembered this and she said oh who was can you show me this painting so we I said well that's him I said it was it's definitely yeah (laughs) that's how I remember him so yeah yeah, it's nice to show her share that with her you know (laughs) definitely oh my goodness that's lovely but how lovely. So he, and I think, you know, spirit will, and, and will show themselves to people that they know can see them. And I think mm. he obviously knew you had that sensitivity. And um, that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. It is interesting. So, mm. yeah, similar to what you were saying about, you know, we, we see these think, people and think, yeah. oh, is it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. And there's, but there's always some kind of quality to them, isn't there? That you kind of feel mm. they might look human and solid, and but there's something else about them that you know they're mm. not just human. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. but how wonderful! That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I love, I love that. I love that because yeah. you're looking at his portrait, and he's looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> looking at the portrait. <laughs> yeah, yeah and whenever I that's, a, that's lovely yeah going back and seeing his portrait it was like he's almost like he's got a real presence like he's the mm. the stare the look that this man had is similar you know the same sort of energy oh, yeah it's just... amazing wow <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but do so, you, you, you find so so like with me do you find it's just all completely normal and natural do you know I think yeah well it's, it can it can seem 
if you're talking to other people about it, it can seem weird and odd. Yeah, but actually, I... when you're in that moment, it doesn't feel mm. odd or strange. It just feels normal. Mm. Yeah, as I kind of like you were saying, I kind of take for granted the way that I see things, and it's only mm. when I'm <clears throat> talk to yeah. people that aren't on that wavelength that, and I know mm. maybe not to share with it, some people like that anyway. So. If I start to feel yeah. like I'm um, defending myself or sort of mm. Mm. making excuses for, oh, you know, yeah. then not being comfortable, I think, no, I'm not going to share this. So, it, yeah, yeah, it has to be with people true. that yeah. Yeah. understand, mm. yeah, or get it, yeah. Yeah, really? yeah. so... Where did you but it's go? it's difficult not to yeah. share, isn't it? Because it's when these things yeah. happen, it's so exciting, you know. And it's kind of it is a yeah. lovely thing. Often it's just that lovely thing, isn't it? You just want to share it, you know. Yeah, um, it is. It's oh. it's really yeah, really special. Yeah. yeah, and I find well, you must find with your work as well that mm. we have these talk to people that have had similar experiences or things happen and yeah mm. it's exciting it, it's, it's, <laughs> it is exciting yeah, yeah. In, and interestingly i was mm. just thinking as you were saying that mm. i was giving a reiki session to a lady who's who also comes regularly to my sound bath mm. um, i was giving, I've given her a series of reiki healing sessions and she's she's lovely she's very open-minded she follows a christian path but she's mm. very open-minded and actually she she was asking me some advice on she'd seen a light in her bedroom mm. um she was very sweet because she said she said oh i know i can ask you fran because you'll understand <laughs> you know? mm. and i'm like you can tell me anything I just, <laughs> nothing will mm. surprise me but I, I wonder what your take of this is if i, if I share it so okay, she yeah. said she was asleep at night and mm. um she woke up to see this Again, I think it was a blue orb in her right. bedroom. Yes. And um, it was on the floor or near the floor. Mm. I think it was quite big, though. She was saying it was sort of, I don't know, she said it was, wasn't as small as the orb that I'd seen. It was, I can't remember mm. how big it was, but she said it was quite big. Um, she said she kind of got out of bed because she was just so surprised to see it and stood up and walked over towards it. And as she walked over towards it, she said it was almost like it burst. Oh, she, she felt like she'd yeah. stepped on it and it had gone oh, yeah the light kind of dispersed and then it disappeared mm. it just went mm. she said to me what was it you know what do you think it was and I said well, only having had my experience of fairies and seeing the orbs you know the light orbs mm. it could have been a fairy it could have been and it was mm. very low down to the ground mm. um she was then sort of worried she said oh no I think I stepped on it <laughs> she said <laughs> <laughs> because she said and it was really strange she said it was like it is this you know it's like bursting a balloon it's like everything just kind of all the light kind of yeah radiated out and then just mm. disappeared and mm. I said to her I said well I, I don't know for sure I'll have to ask somebody else <laughs> so I don't know whether you've ever come across anything like that or well I mean I've seen the the images of orbs being that people have caught on camera and I think it's because they move very quickly some of them mm. don't they? and almost so you can't you can't really register them with our eyes and mm. I don't know I think my theory is and somebody might have a different theory is that it's energy and it's almost like condensed energy that these beings traveling in this way mm in these orbs mm. so mm. like animal spirits human spirits fairies and maybe we just have that form mm. for a while but maybe mm. it's energetic perhaps they can't hold that form for a, a long time and then yeah. they disperse okay yeah they're coming in sense. maybe they're coming in into our reality in that form and then yeah 
not hold it for a long time yeah. in reality yeah. maybe I don't know that's just my idea yeah no I, I think you're right I think I, I do feel that yeah like you say they kind of travel in those orbs um, so mm. thinking of the crab apple fairy and but then she materialized into the, a form but then yes. dematerialized and just disappeared so this you know this lady mm. that had the experience of the blue light I don't think she saw anything else after it kind of burst as it were but yeah I think I mean without knowing more detail about what was going on and, and where she was and maybe it was... she said it's never happened since you know she'd never no. seen it since so it was just maybe... a one-off thing I mean maybe it was frightened I mean if it was a, a frightened, fairy yeah. maybe it's because yeah. oh didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so I think yeah I think I said she could have surprised it you know mm. so that would make sense so yeah and just in that moment where they That's kind true. of they met that yeah it's frightened or something yeah mm. but um mm. it's fascinating yeah I, I used to have another thing when I was rem- remembering when I was very young talking about coloured orbs and it's not quite the same thing that we've just talked about but I used to I remember lying in bed and again, I've never mm-hmm. talked to anybody about this, and I don't know if anyone else has had this experience. But it would be, you know, it'd be dark, or there'd be like a mm-hmm. half light, you know, moon coming through the curtains. Mm-hmm. And I would look up, and I, I would be kind of quite alert, and I'd see like mm-hmm. tiny. It reminded me of like you know the hundreds and thousands that you put on cakes, these kind of coloured little oh, sugar. Yes, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd see them coming down, and yeah. like just showering quite slowly down yeah on top of me and and I felt again this excitement and I felt quite I'd be so kind of mesmerized by these and it was like tiny 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 I know yeah lights of like speckles and Mm. um I'm so like, glad like you've, yeah. <laughs> Have you had this? Have yeah, had I'm this so thing? glad you've shared that because I used to lie in bed. I don't know how old I was, but I know I was sharing like a double bed with my sister at the time, I think, because we didn't have our own we shared a bedroom. We were quite little. I think I was mm. about, it's before I went to school. Yeah. Yeah, before I went to school. So, I don't know, three or four maybe. Yeah. And I yeah. remember lying yeah. in bed, and that was one of the favourite things that I used to notice in the dark, <laughs> was coming down from the ceiling, these little speckles. Yeah. Like light. Claire, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I used to watch You're the them. first person that's ever told me. Yeah. Oh. And I think it's because with my, oh, wow. with my adult rational mind, I thought, oh, I must have been just because, I, you know, that's the way I was seeing yeah. the dark, but I've not seen that since, you know, maybe in meditation. No. But no. Um, that's something I used to, and it's like a, like that's seeing really a fuzzy, pixelated yeah. screen. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. yeah. um, um, I remember thinking, mm-hmm. oh, was it just how I'm seeing the dark, you know, the light spectrum in the dark or something? Yeah. You know. And I've thought about it a lot over the mm. course of my life. And and again, it stopped after, I don't know how, it was only when I was very young, mm. the similar sort of age that you've just described. Yes. But yeah, I would be excited to go to bed and have this experience. Yeah. I'd jump in bed, I'd lay awake and I'd see all these speckles. Yeah. And I even used to put my tongue out to try and catch them on my oh. tongue. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah and I kind of felt like I could taste them or maybe it was just imagining I could taste mm. them but I, I remember thinking and they they kind of felt a bit like a bit like the space dust you used to be able to get <laughs> you know you put the, that sort of sugary stuff in oh, that and, sort of, yeah. and I think I imagined that but I was so excited to kind of every night to have this kind of experience mm. and I'm that's amazing I'm so pleased you shared that as well Claire, yeah. because I thought it was only me. Yeah, it's just, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's just one of yeah. those things that I have as a memory yeah. that I've, yeah. I suppose I've never shared with That's anyone. And when you brought that up, I was like, oh my gosh. Neither have I. <laughs> That's what I was. Neither have I. How oh, weird. I've never told anybody that. 
I've never told mm. anyone. But, oh my and gosh. Kind of on and off throughout my life, I've tried to look into that and research and see what it was, but I've never come across anything that's given me an answer. I'm sure I've I heard. Yeah, I don't get it now. I don't have it now. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure I've heard somebody in the past talking about specs, seeing specs. But I remember, mm. you know, in folklore, in the like the pixie folklore I've been researching, mm. you know, there are one or two people from oldie woldy times that have said, "Oh, the pixies appear." as specks in the in the air um so and i thought what do they mean by that is it that you know what i was seeing or is it the point of energy where they start and then they transform into an orb maybe and then into a being i don't know right is this sort of like seeing some sort of energy they're very tiny very yeah yeah tiny yeah, it could be the energy, and and they're all different colours, and mm. and I think I do remember seeing just very very faintly just faces coming through, but really kind, sweet, faint, nothing frightening. Yeah, but it was more the kind of speckles that I'd see. Oh, oh, oh that's amazing! Well, I'm so pleased to you told me yeah, that. That's brilliant. Yeah, well, but. The other thing I used to do as well is in my little bedroom, this is when I was slightly older, had these yellow curtains mm. and I'd see all these little faces in my curtains and I still see those things. I know mm. I know there's a term yeah. for it, like paradigm, yeah. but something that I've really had That's a right. propensity yeah. to be able to see since I was a child mm. and yeah, like seeing faces and fairy figures in nature and yeah, mm, everywhere. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating, isn't it? It it's is. So <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it is. Wow. Mm. Mm. It's lovely. I think, yeah. um, I kind of think, you know, I wish everybody could see all this. <laughs> um, would, I think people would kind of, what's the word I'm trying to find? You know, when you go into nature and you're aware of all these elementals and nature spirits and fairies, mm. you know that, you know, there's a respect and you have this deep respect for them, deep respect mm. for the trees and deep respect for nature. And and you feel you're part of a family and that we're all connected. Mm. And I, I feel sad that, you know, that isn't the sort of majority view of the world. I think if majority people... Have mm. those experiences or have that deep connection? I think we'd all look after the world a bit better, you know. I think, well, that would be the hope, but yeah, I just for me, I just feel you know, even if I, I'm looking at my plants in my, mm. my room at the moment, I talk to them, I talk to my plants when mm-hmm. I water them, I'll tell them how beautiful they are and how lovely they mm. are, and mm. if I have to you know, take off any dead leaves or trim any of them, I'll, I'll, I'll let them know. I'll say, mm-hmm. right, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> you know, it might hurt for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to make you look more beautiful, you know. Oh, and, that's really nice. Yeah. You know, I just think, yeah, they're all living beings, aren't they? They're all living mm-hmm. spirits. And... So, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a very animist view. Um, I think, yeah, having that awareness of yeah, the other, you know, um, it's not even the other world is it? it's 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 part of our world it's just a different dimension mm. it's on a different plane there are you know nature spirits there fairies they're on mm. a different plane and they're there maybe mm. not we can't always see them but we can sense them often and yes yeah. and there's plant music oh have you seen those little devices oh I my know. gosh my, I, one of my yeah. things i want to to buy because I'm I'd yeah. like to use it in a sound bath actually. <clears throat> I'm thinking incredible. I must. Um, they can be a little bit pricey, but I'd, I'd really like to get one and um, yeah, to hear the plants um, mm. would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think that's one of the um, things that I'd really really love because it's like yeah. it's one of these kind of 
things you don't need it's quite and it's quite expensive you said as you say yeah. but I feel like yeah. it'd be just so transformational yeah. to have and use in my fairy work and use with other people mm. and mm. can you imagine I mean mm. taking out groups of people like I know you do do you, you take out groups of people into woodlands, don't you? Yeah, or that's what you do at the moment. I've taken groups. Out. I've worked with groups, other groups that have asked me to run sort of sessions. Oh, for okay. Nature, but um, yeah, but it is something I'm thinking about next year. Actually, I was doing more outdoor yes. sound baths and, but just oh. connecting, you know, with trees and. Wow. But on yeah. kind of those sensory levels, of just it's just yeah, I think. So mm. much, isn't there? <laughs> so much to do. Um, I know there is. Mm. Well, maybe, maybe we should both get our plant little devices, plant music, oh, yeah. the plant devices, Got and to. meet up. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it would be fantastic. Well, we were talking about about we we need to we need to plan. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. up your way. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Oh. 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 Is there anything else that you wanted to share your experiences, um, Fran? Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess I mean there's quite there's lots. And actually, as I as I've been talking to you and as I was making notes beforehand, I'm thinking I really need to put all this down. You know, record mm. it actually in a book or something. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah. I take a lot of. I love photography as well, so I do a lot of nature photography and just things mm. again that call to me and. And I can sometimes see there's a, a way of seeing things. And people have said to me, um, oh, you've got a certain way of seeing things when you photograph it. Yeah. And it's not something I'm conscious of doing. I just, mm. I think I'm just so kind of doing it from my heart every time, you know, I kind mm-hmm. of feel. So, yeah, so the, the tree, so I'm just looking at my notes here, my notes. I'm thinking I must write it all down and maybe bring it together with some photos. Yes. Um, I know there's you know, there's lots of people that have written books about you know trees, but I think something about your own personal experiences, mm. and this is what I've found within the fairy community that I've come across, you know, through yourself, through Joe, through our online community. You know, you're sharing these experiences, and that's so special because you feel you're not just being told, "Oh, this is what happens," and this is the you know this is what this tree means, or you're actually hearing personal encounters or personal experiences mm. Mm. which I find really really helpful and under, helping yes. me to understand my experiences and so I'm wondering whether I, I need to put that into some sort of little book and just you know I think that'd be amazing put it out there about it and like I'm one of these people that think and think <laughs> like I mm. right, just do it <laughs> I just got to do it. So, um, yeah, especially if it's because I I saw you've got a children's book, haven't you? Called The Whisper. Yes. Yeah. The Whisper. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah, The Whisper. Mm. Not necessarily a fairy, but it's more. It's very much an energy. So the whisper represents the love energy in the universe. Oh wow! So I created this little character that yeah flies around the world waking up people's hearts so the story is it's a very gentle story and it's about about loving kindness for ourselves as Mm. well as for others I think that's really important Mm. I think people can really learn to really love and value themselves Mm. you know if we all did that we'd be happy with ourselves we wouldn't be so unhappy with other people Mm. um it's just this really lovely story so the whisper flies all around the world and goes into all the little dark corners of the world and wakes people up and brings oh, its light and beautiful. Um, but yeah it looks like a little will of the wisp the lady that illustrated beautiful illustrations of the book and the first sketch that she did she did a, a an actual fairy with wings and it's quite pink and i said no no it's mm. not a fairy it's just an energy mm. Mm. and the blue was something i kind of felt because i'd seen the blues orbs and yeah and i knew it was a healing color very calm healing color so mm-hmm. so we had some you know other sketches and she came up with the whisper and um, yeah it's worked really well and it's, it's beautiful oh. little character and people have said are we going to do a sequel I thought well I don't know but <laughs> I don't know if I should do a sequel with the whisper because I think the mm-hmm. whisper's done its work but um I have got other 
you know, stories in the pipeline that I'm still working on. So. Yeah. What about a little book for children on Ooh. connecting with trees? I mean, children do it automatically, yeah. naturally anyway. Do, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that would, a children's book would also give the parents some understanding as well because they'd be the ones of I suppose mm. reading the books with the children and yeah that's true actually, actually. Yeah. Yeah. something sort of simple but you know with with the things you've been talking about to me about the trees. and I think especially the image of the, the crystal under the tree and I think mm. you know that was something that actually happened yeah to somehow weave that into a story yeah definitely would um would be a good idea i think um mm. yeah i've just got to get on and do it <laughs> i know i know not, it takes time i think yeah it, but... not think about it too much <laughs> no. just, i think yeah. i think the trouble is as well i get so i, I get so many ideas and mm. i'm like this every day i've got ideas for so many things you end up then not doing any of it because you don't know where to start, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, I know. Um, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah I'm I've got to make I some that... time. It's making the time, isn't it? And and I think when yeah. I did The Whisper, I'd the seed of that story had actually started sort of some, some years, pro- you know, sort of 20 years previous, but I only had time to really work on it because I self-published it and designed the book and... Mm. Um, obviously marketed it and everything and I it's because it was during the covid so in that first lockdown I and I was oh, made redundant right. from my job yeah so I had time to to work on it mm. and it's interesting because I was thinking I've had this story for years and wanted to do something with it and I had sent it to a couple of publishers but didn't hear anything back mm. and I just put, put it away in a drawer I forgot about it mm. and thought oh you know one day I'll do something with it and um, but it always felt like it needed to kind of, you know, I needed to put it into a book. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with COVID and the lockdowns, I had time to work on it. So mm-hmm. that's probably Amazing. why I just immersed myself in it. And I and I spent months kind of fine tuning it and editing it and then mm-hmm. putting it all together. Um, and actually, that was really healing for me. I think mm-hmm. having that time and just being completely creative because I wasn't working and and actually the story even though it had been kind of the foundations of it had been written some years previous it kind of related to what was happening in the world mm. you know that whole idea that we couldn't hug you know and it's called the whisper subtitle hug around the world we couldn't hug each other we couldn't but we could still send that loving kindness and people were connecting you know around the world weren't they in that time mm-hmm. um kind of online or singing and the, I always remember the Italians that always stuck in my mind the videos of all the Italians in their apartments singing oh, and yes. playing music to each other and I just yeah. thought how beautiful is that yeah. it was amazing just to pass the time of day yeah. and to keep morale up it was really lovely mm. and um so yeah the, the story of the whisper kind of t- tapped into that a little bit um, yeah I mean, I mean it's so there's so many of us I hear this time and time again with people friends people I speak to from a podcast um that that time seemed to push our you know many of us our creativity forward or what okay this is something that I wanted to do for a while to gift to the world and for me it was I can understand yeah recording mm. meditations and then from that my idea for a podcast came from that and so it's all these seeds in that time wasn't there like you with your book and yeah yeah. so yeah it was Mm. yeah it was a gift in some ways yeah definitely Um, yeah I think I think it's taking what was kind of a really difficult challenging time and just finding yeah that kind of positive mm. and what you could what could come of that and mm. yeah I think it's quite a unique time well I know there were obviously still people that had to work in that time but for people that weren't working it's a really quite and again it's that thing of having the time you know we heard about people connecting more with nature and mm-hmm. do wonder you know and I, I feel it sort of from that time more and more people have 
become more aware of yes. the natural world and going out into the natural world. And and we see it when I when I go to the forest with my partner. We we're always saying this never used to be so busy here. You know, years mm. ago you'd Same. hardly see anybody. Yeah, but now it's crowds, <laughs> which is lovely that they're all going out to the forest. But sometimes it's like, oh, it used to be really nice and quiet here. <laughs> I know, I know. It has. There are, you know, these landslides like the Dartmoor. There are places that have become so. It's become so busy. Yeah, compared to what it was. And then you've got more cars, and that you kind of think. Mm. And then I think, oh no, mm. yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. It's, but mm. you know, I, I remember saying at the time, I said, I said to my partner, I said, "It's like suddenly people have discovered nature." You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, Yes. You know, yeah. It's like, all these years? <laughs> <laughs> what she's done <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's like, but then I guess, yeah, I guess it's, I don't know. And it was a really, I remember it being a really lovely spring as well, that first year, wasn't it? That mm. first lockdown. Mm. We had a gorgeous weather. And so, yeah, everyone's out the door. And there was just a lovely sense of calm and, Mm. And again, you yeah. know, people have said, and I and I remember feeling it and sensing it at the time that because there was no traffic and there was no mm. everything was quiet and you could hear the birds more and the birds were singing more. I think you know they mm. were much more happier and everything just felt more alive. It was really lovely. Mm. So yeah, I think even though it was an awful time, I think it was quite a unique time that was. Well, I would probably never, or hopefully, never have to go through again. But that. No. The positives of that were that, you know, we had time and time to connect and time to spend in yes. nature. And, although I, I laugh because I think my life didn't really change that much because I tend to, I don't tend to go out very much anyway, <laughs> socialising in big groups. And <laughs> I tend to spend a lot of time on my own in the woods. <laughs> so life didn't really change for me, you know. It's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So oh. I think for people that oh. are really love, you know, being in groups and socialising and mm. spending money and you know, it must have been really difficult, but it didn't didn't affect me yeah. really because you know, that's the yeah. I'm similar, yeah, really. So. I I I don't mind my own company. Uh, mm. Being a single parent oh. for years, well, mm. oh, twelve years or so. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, mm. so I've learned. I've I've done a lot since I was really young. Actually, I've done a lot mm. going on, on my own into nature and doing that kind of thing. It's so, lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's to go on your own. I think it's um, got mm. no other distractions and this. Yeah, I think you can connect much more deeply. Yeah. Oh, mm. the cat's just wandered off onto the onto the table. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come he on, doesn't man. like me being on the computer. No. He being on the computer. <laughs> it's like my cat. My cat, whenever I'm doing this, she'll either want to come in, she'll either be mm. behind the glass, because I don't have a cat flap, I've just got patio mm. doors or a letter in the front of the back, and she'll either be outside with her paws on the glass meowing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. She'll come in, mm. she'll come in and have some food, and then she'll want to go out again. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> always does say it when I'm on the yeah. doing these. And this is yeah. what, and I thought I thought, oh Ollie's out, so I thought he might be out all night, but he's actually come in and <laughs> he's now got his back to me in, in yeah. indignant that I'm on the computer yeah. and not disgusted. <laughs> Cats are oh, funny, aren't they? they? Oh. Oh, so funny. Like, oh you're not giving oh, me attention, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's been wonderful oh, talking with you, Fran. And you, yes. And I'm, I'm, I know I've, I've probably gone off on tangents, but oh, and there's great. probably a lot more I could have talked about. But mm. yeah, I did have. Um, actually, I was gonna, I'll send this to you. I, I did a. I had a, an experience with a yew tree, which was oh well, just a few years ago. Um, we can yeah, if you want to share that now, it'd be lovely to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah. Carry on. Just have a drink. And, okay, yeah. Right, Ollie, my cat is now staring at me. Okay. Um, 
Oh dear, they're funny, aren't they? <clears throat> So yeah, so but, so I'd gone on a walk with my partner. We'd um, mm. another woods in the new the new forest is a huge area, so there's lots of lovely walks and woodlands. And mm. It's beautiful. I love I love it. But it's again, it was a rainy day, and we were walking through the woods. It started to get quite heavy the rain, so I just said to him, "Well, look, let's just find some trees to shelter." And um, we found this to the side of the path, this little area, and there was a there was an oak tree and a yew tree kind of mm. opposite each other so pete said well you know we'll sit we'll sit under the trees and let's do a meditation mm. um my instinct was to i wanted to sit under the oak tree because i always find oaks very again very comforting and protective mm. and and i've always felt a little bit and that's going to sound strange i've always felt a little bit scared of yew trees no idea why mm. but i just sometimes find their energy quite intense so at this moment, I was there thinking, do I sit under the oak tree or the yew tree? And then something in me said, no, sit under the yew tree. You know, I needed to do this. I needed to mm. sit with the yew tree. So he sat with the oak and I sat with the yew tree. And um, I was really nervous. I was nervous. I sat on the ground and I had my back against the tree, but I was really quite tense and nervous about doing it. Mm-hmm. As I'm trying to kind of ease myself back, Again, I heard a voice from the tree saying, um, "Ease, you know, rest your back on me. You know, don't be frightened." Um, and then and it was a female voice, quite a young female voice, and mm-hmm. she said, I've, "I've written it down. I'll send this to you as well, Claire, because it's a bit more clearer than I've written it down." But she basically said to me, "Don't be afraid, for I have light at my core." Oh. And with that, I just completely relaxed, mm. put my back on the tree, and I went off into this kind of meditation journey. Mm. And again, was just getting some information. And she was saying about working more with the tree medicine. Mm. And then I had this experience where I was still in that sort of altered state. But I had my eyes open and I looked across the path mm. and there were... I could see there were like ferns and kind of bracken and things on the path, but it also made the um, shape of like, you know, the old medicine men used to wheel their medicine cabinets around. Like in America, you see the medicine men selling kind of, I don't know if you've, Mm. like big, big cabinets on wheels and they'd they'd wheel them around and then they'd sort of, they'd turn up at a town Mm. or a village Mm. and they, they, I think they were called medicine men, they'd open up their cabinet. They'd be selling potions and lotions and and people would say often it was snake oil. They, you know, they found some some of these okay. people weren't particularly, you know, honest about what they were selling. Mm. But but I saw as I'm sat by this tree and I looked across the path and I could see like one of these old medicine cabinets. And then I I could mm. see it was made up of ferns, mm. but it was really kind of there as well. And I mm. just thought is again this is what the tree is showing me about the medicine the medicine mm-hmm. of the plants and the tree um and then with that the kind of the whole scene kind of vanished and i kind of came back into this kind of world and um from that moment on i've loved yew tree so mm. every time now i see a yew tree i'll go and spend time with it yeah and i've had some quite interesting <laughs> advice oh, from you trees yeah oh because yeah. they're really and really old aren't they so what what do they very old yeah what what sort of things have they um said? a lot of it's been about really standing in your power mm. and being being yourself mm. not being afraid to be yourself and i've not had that with other trees i've not had those kind of messages but yeah, whenever I've had experiences of tree of the yew tree, now it's always something about you know standing around, standing in your power, and being not being frightened to stand in your mm. power, um, and not being frightened to be yourself. Yes. Um, which is again, I think sometimes, generally, I'm quite quietly confident, but there are moments you kind of go, oh. I don't feel like I fit in or I feel different to that group or I feel different to my family or I feel mm. you know, people won't understand me or 
if I say what I, you know, my thoughts, people won't get it and I'll be <laughs> isolated even more. But actually, again, from these messages from the news, I'm getting more and more confident to say, this is who I am. And I can't help, you know, if I have these experiences that are seemingly odd to other people. Mm-hmm. And it is about finding, you know, those that do experience it or do mm. understand and are on that wavelength. Um, mm. So, yeah, the yew trees have always kind of reminded me of, and now kind of reminded me every time I spend time in it, it's all about you know, standing in your power, being yes. true to yourself, you know. Yeah, I've taken some very strong, very strong kind of energy. Yeah. Definitely, it's very strong medicine. That's what I get mm. from the yew trees that I've mm. connected with, and photos I've because I do these mirror photos. I don't know if you've seen where I I see images Ooh, of the trees. I, I do, I, I do those as well. Then, yeah. yeah. And I've done a few with yew trees. Yeah. <laughs> there is this church in Wales in this place called Keffen. Kefir Nils, I think, I don't know if I'm sorry, Welsh people, I'm, mm. I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's mm. like there's a hill fort, big hill fort, and then at the bottom of this hill fort nearby, mm. as far as I remember, it's a few years ago, there's a little church and there's some very old yew trees there. And I did, when I was there, um, 2018, I did some mirror photos of the yew trees. And these amazing beings appeared. Like, they are just, one of them looks like a typical sort of, typical sort of alien, alien. But I suppose it could be fairy as well. It's got big (laughs) almond eyes and... You know, almost like they're dressed in these robes, just very regal looking. And there's another one, just like a goddess with kind of like a, sort of like a horse face. I'll send them to you so you can see them. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see those. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Gosh. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting you said that medicine's really strong with you because I feel Mm. that really kind of, yeah, very, I have, but it was only sort of after that, that yew tree kind of meditation that I'd had. Mm. But I have a newfound respect for and, and kind of love of, of yews. Because before yeah. then, I always found, I kept my distance. Mm. Yeah, really, really interesting why. I don't know. I think sometimes as well, with some yew trees in the, I know there's a place in the forest, particularly mm. where in the rain, it can look like they're, the bark is like blood. It looks like they get quite red. The bark is quite red mm-hmm. and the rain makes it look like blood. And it's quite, you know, when you see it, it's quite yeah. alarming sometimes. Well, I found it alarming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I kind of associated it. And I know it's a, you know, it's all about death and rebirth. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I felt that really strongly with the ewes. It's like that very, they're not afraid of the dark. They're not afraid of darkness mm-hmm. but because they have got light, you know, and, Yes. Um, yeah, it just that, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But, um, you know, because they are they can seem very dark, but they're not. They're not. They are um, these the these portals, aren't they? I mean, I know all trees yeah. are portals, but they are mm. like especially yew trees. They are these mm. intermediary gateways between this world and the next. Very. Mm feel that very strongly for them, from them like it's almost like Definitely. yeah, yeah. life death and rebirth mm. and a mm. lot of them have graveyards built subsequently around them or churches yeah, and, yeah. Uh, mm. Mm. yeah it's like it's like they're not um yeah as you said they're the gateways aren't they and they're not frightened of death and you know it's they're very yeah very powerful because there was that film i can't remember the name of it oh gosh what's it called? i'll see if i can find out afterwards but i don't know if you ever saw it it was a film about i think it was a woman that was had cancer and she was having treatment mm. but it was from her son's perspective of all the challenges and there's a tree 
it's a yew tree in the film mm. that kind of the boy is connecting with, but it, the yew tree becomes, it's a bit like an, like the Ents in the t- oh, sort yeah. of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It becomes a being. Really powerful film. But I thought it was interesting that they used the yew tree, because obviously mm. they use medicine, don't they, from extracted from yew for mm-hmm. cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. I'll see if I can find the I'll find out the film and I'll send you the link because yeah, it's a really amazing film and quite thought-provoking and powerful. I'm sure that, um, that rings a bell, but, I yeah, if you can send me the name of yeah, it, that would be I'll great. It, yeah. there's, there's also a writer um, called, I don't know if he's written his book yet, but he, Michael Dunning, have you heard of him? Oh, no, um, so, no. He he's done a lot of shamanic work with yew trees, and I can't remember his. It's a while since I've looked at his website, but he recovered mm. from um, illness through spending a lot of time with these trees, the yew trees, and he even slept right. okay. slept under the trees for a while. Wow! Um, oh, wow! And gosh. Somehow, probably says in his books about the the medicine, but the the toxicity mm-hmm. of the trees seemed, from what I remember, seemed to counteract what was going on in his body. So instead of making it, you know, because right. he was so unwell, toxicity yeah. healed him. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm. Oh, I'll have to find it. So Michael Dunning. I'll have to find Michael Dunning. Find that book. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. He was, this was again, this was in Wales. I met him in 2018 mm. at this shamanic conference that I went to. Right. And okay. at that point, he hadn't written a book, but he has got the website. If you put in Yew Trees, Michael mm. Dunning, I think. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I definitely will look into that because that is fascinating, and I think you know, and it really taps into that idea of energies. You know, you don't even have to ingest, you know, yeah, the mm. plant, or you know, to actually be. And I think this is what trees do for me. I feel healed just being in their presence, and mm. and they've all got their own specific areas of healing haven't they yes yeah that's fascinating definitely i'll look into that thank you hmm. oh thank you for sharing oh gosh it's, it's an amazing it's, world it's, isn't it it's really it is amazing. it oh. is <laughs> um yeah. Mm. yeah so keep sharing your medicine with other people and mm. i look forward to meeting with you mm. at some point next year and definitely yeah what we can yeah. magic up definitely <laughs> oh. <laughs> you really want to definitely oh. yeah. thanks mm. for your time oh and... thank you claire it's been lovely really lovely to, to hear your stories as well and especially mm. about those speckles I, like that's, I love that i love that you've had that as well <laughs> i love it I can't. I thought, has anybody else had this? <laughs> yeah, it. You know, do you know, it's something that I remember. Always mm. seems special to me, but I've never <laughs> spoken to anybody. You know how you yeah. can sort of keep these things to yourself because it's just one of those things. That, oh, yeah, that happened. And, yeah. But because you brought that up, yeah. I was like, oh well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Mm. Oh, I'm so pleased. It's not just yeah. me. Because I thought, have I just yeah. imagined it? You know, like you do. I think, have I just mm. imagined that? But definitely a thing. Yeah. Mm, and you said it was something to do with pixies. In folklore, this is, you know, in my recent, in recent times when I've been reading in folklore, mm. it just struck me that somebody described seeing pixies and they described them as specks floating in the air. And, that, and then I, that oh, reminded me of well, my experience as yes. a child lying in bed. I'm not saying that these yeah. were pixies, but whatever it was, 
that's mm. how I saw it, like these little specks yeah. coming down yeah. from the sea. energy, isn't it? Of some, mm. some sort, I think. Yeah, yeah, seeing energy, mm. and and then it brings to mind as well talking to recent guests on my podcast, uh, mm. all of the all of the orbs and energies and lights that she's mm. captured on her security cameras in her garden. Mm. Um, and uh, <clears throat> thinking, well, we only see a tiny amount of the spectrum, don't we, with our eyes? Exactly. And, yeah. and now Definitely. we have mm-hmm. technology that can start to see what we can't see mm-hmm. with our eyes. Yeah. I mean, it's really quite minute, isn't it, what we can see with our human mm. eye? You know, it's. Um, I, remember, I read something about it the other day, and it's like, quite shocking we can see a very small you know frequency really than yes and i think this is why when you think about animals because you know especially with cats we talked about cats earlier Mm. you know you know they're seeing things Mm -hmm. you know how they react and their body react and you think you know well some of us can see it but i I sometimes do then think maybe it's not good to see it all the time maybe Mm. (laughs) No, it's interesting and why these things happen when they do and, and the moments mm. when they happen and Yeah. Mm. Oh dear. Loads, lots more to think about. And yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm definitely I am I've decided this this year, I'm up in the next year, I'm gonna deepen my connection with trees and mm. um, spend a lot more time than I am. I spend quite a lot of time, but a lot more time. Mm. And just seeing, you know, what, what comes through and, and writing it down and yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It's really special. They yeah, have so yeah. much to so much wisdom wisdom to teach us, don't they? And uh, Absolutely. I oh, there's a there's a um just briefly tell you this, there's a oak tree in the park near where I live and it's big old Massive old oak tree. I don't know how old it is, but it must be a protected one. And it's got mm. like a little um, seat, a natural seat on its trunk, like a big oh, wow. wow. That's lovely. Yeah. And every now and then yeah. I'll wander down yeah. to the park and I'll sit under this tree and ask a question and like you say it will just give me it tends to be the answers just tend to be so mm. simple and so yeah. gentle <laughs> it, it's really like oh yeah that's the obvious it's the most obvious thing you know very yeah. given in a very wise way yeah that's what i found with definitely of tree. completely uncomplicated yeah yeah yeah. yeah, or they'll just um, they'll just drop a few leaves. You know, you'll be thinking of something, and they'll drop a few leaves. You think, oh, yeah. what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they I are, mean, and I think, yeah, very gentle. Oh, thank you, Claire. Yeah. I know we could talk forever, but <laughs> oh, but no, thank you so much. It's been really yeah. nice chatting. Yeah, and um, yeah, we will meet up, and um, yeah, be great. Well, well. Yeah. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your Thank evening. You. Thank you. And um, okay, be to your cat. And you. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye. Welcome back. Thank you to my guest Fran for sharing her stories with us. This has been another great episode offering a perspective that challenges the boundaries between the physical and the metaphysical. Perhaps some of my listeners could relate to Fran's account of staring longingly out of the car window at the forest and not wanting to go home as a child. I found this very moving and familiar as I experienced similar longings in my childhood when driving home in the back of my parents' car from days out on Dartmoor or holidays in Cornwall and Wales. Her journey is not just one of nostalgia, but a testament to the enduring connections that many of us have lost or forgotten in the rush of modern life. 
It was really heartwarming to discover that we had both had childhood memories of watching specks of light falling from our bedroom ceilings. I've never spoken to anyone else about this experience. In podcast interviews, I have also shared my experience of seeing a green light in my bedroom when I was a teenager. I will probably do an episode about my experiences at some point. It was interesting to discuss the blue orbs too. Orbs fascinate me and I have interviewed several guests on the podcast about these. You can watch episode 8 about fairies and and orbs on my YouTube channel and see the light anomalies we captured whilst filming our chat on Zoom with guest Kate Ray. Other episodes with orbs include episodes 5, 25 and 37. In episode 9 and 10, I speak with Lorraine Wilson and she shares about what she calls flying fairy lights in her garden, many of which she has captured on film. The little old lady that came to bring Fran comfort from the crab apple was such a touching account. And then amazing to hear about her meeting an old woman at the bus stop who looked very similar, though human-sized. Her experience relates to the fairy law that the fae are shapeshifters who can change size and appear and disappear at will. I'm also passionate about tree spirits and connecting to trees for emotional support and well-being. Sound, healing and fairy music have also been part of my journey. I especially love apple trees, which my mum has at the top of her garden. As a child, I would spend hours dreaming and playing beneath them. In tree lore, the apple represents the goddess Aphrodite, love and the love of the mother. If you cut an apple in half across the centre, two stars are revealed that contain the apple seed or pips. You can make magic with these by whispering a wish into half of the apple and burying it in the earth. Eat the other half of the apple. As the buried half pops away, your wishes will come true. This spell is best suited to wishes for love, health and financial abundance. Dragons and unicorns are also believed to live beneath apple trees. And there are stories of buried treasure being found beneath apple trees also. My dearest wish is that this podcast rekindles a sense of wonder and companionship with the natural world that we may have forgotten and reminding us of the support and guidance it offers. Remember, fairies and nature spirits are not confined to folklore. They are vibrant energies that beckon us to remember our place in the world's tapestry. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Claire Sylvan Wand and this has been the Fairy Whispering Podcast. The podcast is researched, produced and hosted by myself, Claire Sylvan Wand. The theme song is Oxygen by Third Girl from the Left. This is an independent show so please show your support by subscribing, sharing with a friend and leaving a five-star review. Also, if you're someone you know has a fairy encounter or another supernatural experience you'd like to share, you can send me your story to Claire, C-L-A, I-R-E at fairy, F-A-E-R-Y, whisperer.co.uk. Thank you and goodbye. See you next time. And remember to keep your heart open and let the wisdom of the fae and nature guide you.